Mojo. Namaste. Good morning. My name is Kanish Parmar and I shall once again be your sutradhar for today as well. As I welcome all our audiences connected to us on this second day of the third edition of Earth A Culture Fest which comes to you virtually this year. Well, those who've joined us yesterday, I'm sure you will agree with me that yesterday was indeed a fantastic and exciting day, keeping your Earth journey ever exciting. For some of us who have joined us today for the first time, let me take this moment very quickly once again to take you through the Earth journey. Earth is a culture fest that keeps alive the meaning of our culture. It focuses on literature, culture, society, music, traditions, history and of course art. Earth takes you through the richness of India, one of the world's most ancient living civilization that discovers and rediscovers itself every day. It is a civilization united by its diversity, the richness of its culture and the glories of its past, the turbulences and triumphs, the landmarks of each era and the knowledge legacy that has come down through the centuries. As you walk through India's history, her geography, her linguistic, scientific and artistic contributions, your individual interpretation will be your discovery, your meaning, your art. Get ready to drench in one more virtual extravaganza Earth Day. Well, this is going to be a brilliant start for you as we start our day today with an intriguing topic, which has become the talk of the town of sorts. Well, it is redefining the center in Indian politics. We have with us Mr. Milan Deora, former Union Minister of State and Member of Parliament, Government of India. Mr. Milan Deora entered the Lok Sabha in 2004 as member of the Indian National Congress. Born in 1976, Milan was one of India's youngest member of parliament. He has held various positions in Parliamentary Committee on Defence, Civil Aviation, Estimates, Urban Development and Information Technology. In conversation with him, we have Mr. Hindol Sain Gupta, who is a multiple award-winning author of nine best-selling books of non-fiction and fiction categories. His book, Being Hindu, became the first book on Hinduism in 70 years to win the Wilbur Award given by the Religion Communicators Council of America in 2018. He is a World Economic Forum Young Global Leader and has been a Knight Peggott Fellow at the Columbia University. He is editor-at-large for Fortune India and a Shivening Scholar at the University of Oxford. So let's go ahead and start with our first session for the day. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Earth Festival. Uh, very, very delighted to be here. I'm uh, delighted to see my old friend Milan Deura. Uh, they, I haven't had a great conversation with him for a while, especially what with COVID. Thank you for joining this conversation, Milan. Thank you, Hindal. Good to see you again. It's been ages. Wonderful. And uh, we're going to have a wonderful conversation on a topic that's dear to both our hearts, how to reinvent or how to rediscover the center in Indian politics. Now, let's begin by talking a little bit about what the center really is, Milan, uh, because the center, quite like the right and the left, also seems to shift its positionality from time to time. Today, when we talk about the center, uh, what do you think you have in mind when you think about the center? And then I'll talk a little bit about what I think. But let you go first. So I think the political center was best um, defined Hindal by John F. Kennedy, and there have been many political centrists over uh, the, the the decades in uh, the the oldest democracy, the United States of America, and India as well. Um, and John F. Kennedy uh, defined it as idealism without illusions. And uh, essentially, what it means is that. It, it's it, it, the 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 left is an ideology, the right is an ideology. But I think Homo sapiens, human beings, uh, have now evolved to a stage where we need a new political vocabulary. And I think it's very hard to pigeonhole people into either the left or the right. Um, in some cases, somebody may be economically right of center, but socially left of center. Where does that leave them? And in my opinion, the center is actually where the truth lies. 
the political center has often been criticized by both the left and the right as being non-committal, as being a fence sitter. Uh, but I think the the centrists, and if you look at many politicians around the world, uh, if you look at most notably uh, Macron in France, um, you look at in some ways Indian many Indian prime ministers cutting across political parties uh, from the Congress. I think we've had a little bit of a technical uh, glitch with uh, Milan Deora. I was just waiting for him to continue his excellent points that he was making about where the center lies. As we wait for Milan to get back his connection, let me talk a little bit about what he was saying and indeed my responses to political centrism. Let's talk about from the point where Millet left it, you know, he mentioned John F. Kennedy's uh, declaration or understanding of the political center as really being a position where you want to do the right thing, but without any illusions. Now, that's a very interesting, uh, you know, and indeed that in a nutshell defines what centrism in politics could really be. Uh, because in politics, often you may want to do the right thing. But there are realities on the ground that you cannot actually avoid. And that, those realities are very, very important. Indeed, that this kind of understanding of being cognizant of political realities while wanting to do the right thing is deeply embedded in Indian civilization and culture too. If you look at the worldview of Cotillia, the Cotillian worldview is constantly cognizant of what the right thing is and indeed also how to achieve it, but keeping in mind the realities on the ground. Let me give you one example. When Cotillia realizes that Magadh new, needs a new em, em, emperor, so to speak, or the ruling elite has been so corrupted that a new um, leader needs to be put in place, he realizes that even though he finds the right person in Chandragupta Maurya, realizes that he cannot send him rushing into battle because the forces at the center of Magad, uh, so to speak, the ruling elite are too powerful to be taken in uh, into or drawn into a face-to-face -face battle immediately. So what does he do? He basically uses what today we would call salami tactics. He says that, well, what do you do? And this is a this is a you know a, a very uh, important and a very famous saying of Cotillia. I do apologize. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Milan. And I was just uh, talk, taking off from what you were saying to talk and just to finish what I was saying. You know this idea that centrism, uh, political this political centrism means that you're cognizant of the realities on the ground. And, you know, if you look at it from the Cotillian point of view, when he sends Chandragupta Maurya to, you know, fight the, you know, the, the corrupt elite, so to speak, he begins from the peripheries because he understands that going into immediate battle would be futile. So it is from the peripheries that slowly, 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 the, uh, the work begins to transform. And, and that's, you know, wanting to do the right thing, as you said, but also being cognizant of ground realities. Right. Why don't you take off? And, yeah, and I, so, and sorry, I, I got cut off. I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> the, I, to me, the center, center, political center is really where things get done. And I think in today's day and age where uh, politics has become extremely polarized, sides are being chosen, uh, the center left, in a sense, has become the far left. The center right has become the far right. Uh, it's very hard for two sides to come together. And my personal belief in politics is that leadership is not about choosing sides. It's about bringing sides together. And the center allows you to do that. So contrary to those who may criticize centrist people, again, you've had John F. Kennedy, who was quote unquote, a Democrat, but a political centrist. You have a Macron in today's day and age. Um, you have, as I said, many Indian prime ministers who veered towards the center. Um, the centrist space is where you can actually cut across the aisle and get things done. And I think that's the way politics was and the way institutions were created over the last several centuries. Uh, the Westminster system of parliamentary democracy, which India adopted, was based around the fact that politicians from the left and the right will eventually be able to converge at the center and get things done. And I think today we need to re-examine some of those institutional frameworks, Hindal, because 
as there's been more and more polarization and we see that we see people sort of digging their heels in um to their particular ideologies and their particular viewpoints um you see the space of reconciliation shrinking and i actually think that as the fringe either on the far left or on the far right tend to dominate and hijack the left and the right or really the center left and the right i think it's very critical for moderates either towards the right or to the left to in fact come together and reclaim that space because that's what a country like india needs to go forward um you know we 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 uh, socially and economically i think every great nation actually needs to reconverge towards the center so that's my particular belief when i revisit some of the um, the 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 thoughts and the ideologies of politicians that have influenced me over the several last several decades i want to talk a little bit about uh, what you are referring to milan uh, about the fringes now you know we were accustomed to talking about certain groups and certain pressure points in politics as the fringe it's a term that you also used and we've all used it the question or the worry really is how fringe is the fringe anymore right and this is not just a concern in a country but this is a concern around the world uh, if you look at america uh, the so called fringes i mean after what happened uh, you know in the attack on on the white house that's not fringe anymore right i mean a fringe group cannot come and take over the white house even if for a small amount of time and we are seeing this in country after country i wonder whether we are you know people like you and me who are really at the center uh, are accurate in our positioning of these groups as the fringe are they really fringe anymore i think it's a Why it's a really very important it? question because um, you're right i think that in my own experience of active politics over the last 16 and a half years um what i consider the fringe again on the left or the right have now become the mainstream left and the mainstream right and um, i think that is something which uh, you know i have friends on on the right and friends on the left in in indian politics and one thing that most moderates agree upon is that we need to reclaim that space because the it, it's it's almost like you know in music um we talk about how um uh, alternative music becomes mainstream music at some point and that's essentially what's happened in politics the the fringe which was the alternative space which did present ideas which were revolutionary and and exciting have now become mainstream politics and that just creates and deepens the political divisions it deepens polarization it deepens uh and and it weakens the ability for politicians cutting across the aisle to come together and get things done for their country um so the real question is how do you reclaim that and why is that happened i think the reason that that's happened is multifold one is that uh certainly the nature of media certainly the nature of uh how narratives are created has i mean demonstrably changed over the last several decades and you know this as a journalist that um uh, you know back in the day with the newspaper the the the, the sort of opinion cycles were Uh, you know 24 hour long opinion cycles and now with 140 characters on twitter and social media it's shrunk to a couple of minutes and maybe few seconds and um, that is something which has radically changed how people engage in politics and has allowed the fringe to become a very loud voice on either side of the political spectrum i think the second issue is also the fact that you see younger people in india you see them in the united states um who are increasingly becoming um uh, more and more wary of mainstream politics as a means to get things done and to bring about change um so you spoke about what happened on on the capitol hill recently and that's a manifestation of the fact that people are getting more and more frustrated and i don't blame younger people for that around the world i actually think that uh, the institutional upgrade which needed to have happened or should happen as society evolves as culture evolves as technology evolves hasn't been happening i don't think india or the westminster system of parliamentary democracy or in the united states the presidential form of democracy has evolved um to uh, and has upgraded itself as technology has moved forward 
and i have that you know example which we spoke about on the phone the other day uh, that when the right to information bill was being enacted in 2005 and i had the opportunity to initiate that debate in the lok sabha as a first time member of parliament um and i meant, i remember speaking about it that it was a disruptive legislation in that it was disintermediating the role of an mp or an mla and the role of questioner in parliament uh, because back in the day before rti a citizen of india had to approach the elected representative to be heard uh, in government and to get a question answered by the government of india and with or the government of the state that they live in and in a post rti era you didn't need to do that you just had to file an rti application and uh, the the bureaucrat concerned was duty bound by law to respond to you in a time bound manner and what that did was that disrupted and as i said disintermediated the process of question ask and in fact i saw after the, the right to information bill was passed you saw greater disruptions in parliament during question ask because question ask effectively became um uh, 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 it as it got disintermediated as i said you started to see people circumventing question ask and parliament and directly accessing government but parliament in a sense should have upgraded itself and it didn't yeah, do that exactly. that's exactly what's happening now i mean you know and what a long journey we've come from you know uh, through in the last few years milan you were talking about a time when a when the ordinary person needed a question asked in parliament through their elected representative then it moved to the rti today of course in every government department you'll hear people complaining about how all time goes in only you know answering rti queries which many would argue including me that this is in a sense the richness of our democracy but we've actually gone one step further today if somebody wants to put pressure on the elected representative's answer a question all they have to do is gather a whole bunch of people get something to trend on twitter and put pressure on their on the elected representative and the person nine times out of 10 will answer now the question here is this format of engagement between the people who elect and the people who are elected requires a certain evil evolved behavior should i say evolution both on the part of the politicians and the part on the part of the voters we don't actually have that yet do we we have the processes of this engagement but have we evolved both as politicians and as voters i think so uh, again the definition of evolution is very relative because yeah. um in some ways i think citizens today are far more political than they were 5 years 10 years 15 years ago and today everyone has an opinion and everyone has the ability to express their opinion uh back in the day not everyone had a political opinion a uh, people saw polit- politics as this distant realm that are not supposed to participate in and it's um it's it's quick sand i don't want to tread near and uh, even if i had an opinion as a citizen i had no real way to manifest that opinion and to express it and today because i have so many means to express it social media being one of them um the the world has become very very political and um, it, it's it's very easy for an issue therefore to dominate people's mind space and with limited information and limited nuances as to how to deal with that issue and how to analyze that issue what it does is it becomes a very black and white thing so you know you if you are a, a member of the opposite i think we are having a little bit of a problem with uh, yeah i'm sorry there's a network problem where i am is that good now yes you're back go on yeah so i said that you know what happens is politics has become so polarized that if you don't support this government for instance or you don't support the opposition you instantly criticize and um uh, uh, you in your heart you believe that everything that the party you oppose whether it's the opposition or the ruling party uh, is wrong and that is actually an untruth because uh, there may be i'm a congressman there may be a lot that i disagree with um, this government but there's a lot that i agree with them as well and if you have to in for me my job is politics my job is to uh, uh, criticize hold the government accountable as a member of the opposition um, the uh, opposing party's job is to sort of uh, hold you know to to criticize the other parties but objectively as a citizen as a journalist as um, a medium like social media uh, the job facts before the people of india and i think that in that polarized climate 
what's happening is people are either getting slotted and pigeonholed into the far left or the far right and as i said earlier the truth lies somewhere in between and the the truth needs to be rediscovered and the only way to rediscover that truth is by essentially political center quite right uh, we coming to the last few minutes of our session and i want to take some of the questions that have been put in the chat box that uh, we have been presented with uh i'll take all the questions together and then we can discuss this quickly milan uh what are the best case scenarios that come about from redefining the center in indian politics what are the common indicators that point towards the need for redefining politics how does one go about redefining the political landscape of a country in your opinion does the current political scenario in india require to be redefined uh why don't you go first well i would say this i would answer some of the questions by saying that i am actually more hopeful about indian democracy and um then i am about uh, and when i say i'm hopeful about indian democracy i mean that i think the political climate is far less this this is something which a lot of people will say i'm they, they wouldn't agree with me but i think the political climate in india is far less divided and polarized uh than it is let's say in the united states um uh, the the fact is that we should still be proud of the fact that even if we disagree with a particular political party or a partic- political ideology when that political party or that ideology election whether it's a state election a local election the general election um there's a smooth transition of power and i think what the united states has shown us unfortunately is that those political that polarized climate which did exist from the time a country like the united states was founded um has come to the forefront now and it's manifesting itself in violence it's manifesting itself in people who actually believe that on either the way that the election was faulty and was stolen so i'm very hopeful for india's democracy um i do think that i also do believe that the indian voter is far more politically aware and has always been so and i'm not talking about the twitter generation by the way i'm talking about the pre twitter generation if you go to rural india for instance and you've traveled a lot hindol um i think they are far more um uh, and as you go down in economic strata uh, you find that the, the 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 awareness with regards to politics is far greater and so so i'm i'm more hopeful that uh, the indian democracy is far more robust is based on solid foundations and can withstand the shocks that you see in the united states of america and regardless of our political ideologies people will never say that the election was faulty that someone stole an election how Thank do we go back towards the center i think that's a tricky space and i think that really requires in in trying times like now it really requires leadership that can bridge that divide and um if if prime minister narendra modi is able to reach out to the center to people on the center left then you know uh, good for him and in the sense that he will be able to bridge that political divide um otherwise you may have in time in, in years in the years to come a leader from say the the political left who might be able to reach out to the center and i think that in the united states the best way that and i don't really have a particular bias about american politics um i think that india and america our relationship should transcend which parties in power but i think that the the democrats understood that the way to defeat um a uh, donald trump um was not through a bernie sanders who was on the far left but through a centrist candidate like joe biden fascinating and i completely agree with you on the point that uh the indian voter is more evolved in india's politics in a sense or political processes are actually far more evolved than most people assume them to be uh, and even after what we've seen in america there's far more reason to hope uh, for india's future and in this political processes and indeed in fact uh, as through the covid period also we have seen i think that's another reason to hope uh, with all the sort of you know usual politicking but actually there has been tremendous cooperation across parties across states across region even between political leaders who may actually otherwise have fairly strong things to say about one another they have cooperated to bring together a, a semblance of order 
in our response to the COVID, uh, you know, pandemic. And I think I see great hope in that. And you know, as you of course know, Bill and India is now sending uh, vaccines to 70 countries around the world. This is unprecedented, right? And uh, foreign minister Jayashankar is right in saying that this is unprecedented and this this is cause for great hope. Now, can we move closer and closer to the center in our conversation? And I think some of the problem is in what you were saying, social media. You know, everybody has an opinion about things that. Uh, perhaps some of you know are not very well and understood, and some of it may far maybe far more nuanced. You know, public policy is is not always easily understood in you know television show debates, right? Public policy is complicated, and so on and so forth. But I am actually very hopeful. And to take the last point you made, the the deep digitization of India, so something that I work a lot on, that is actually creating a whole new India in a sense, right? in people's opinions, people's views, uh, how they interact with politics. And that in 10, 20 years will give us a whole new India. So this is actually a very interesting and a critical time of transition for us, uh, which would be very, very, and how we behave in this time will determine what will happen in the next 50, 100 years in our country, right? So that will be really, really interesting. Last final points to you, Milan, before we close, uh, you know, to sum up some of your thoughts on what we have discussed today, uh, and you know, a couple of last points that you might want to make. No, I would just say, I mean, to summarize, I think that um, I, I do agree with you that Indian voters are far more evolved than their Western counterparts. I have no doubt about that. I've, I've experienced that, in, and I do think that um, I, I really believe that. I hope also that this trend that we're seeing around the world, where um, if you are somebody who is center, there's a proverbial gun on your head to be branded as a far left ideologue. And if you're someone who's center right, there's almost a gun on your head that you should be far right. I think it's very important for moderates on either side of the political divide uh, to come together and reclaim that space. Because as, as you mentioned, when you think of public policy, economic policy, social policy, um, ultimately policies are created through discussion and debate. And that's how a country moves forward. And to have a discussion and debate, you can only have a discussion and debate, a healthy discussion and debate, and a constructive discussion and debate when people on either side can come together. And so I think it's incumbent upon, upon all of us, regardless of our political ideology, to begin by encouraging a healthy discussion. That on its own is a move towards the political center. Great. That's a wonderful uh, point in which to conclude. Uh, I absolutely agree with you. I think there should be more conversations, more dialogue. And who knows, uh, there would be in the days to come, maybe, you know, there is a, now there's a far right Twitter, far left Twitter, maybe there would be a centrist Twitter, some, you know, digital innovator would create it and a digital absolutely. Center, all centrist. But thank you, Milan Deura. It was a thank pleasure you. being able to talk to you once again. And I look forward to seeing you in person sometime. Uh, and thank you, Hindal. To the Earth Festival for giving us this opportunity.